What is up guys? This is the IT Ranger and today we'll be making our 8th? 8th? Wow, we're getting pretty far. Jeez. Today we'll be making our 8th Java tutorial. Our 8th Java tutorial, guys. Come on, man. We're, we're, we're moving along. Yo, we're, we're getting along pretty fast, but we still have a lot, a lot of information we have to cover, so don't don't get too high on your horses just yet. We still have a lot to a lot to do. All right, so um, guys, I want to give a couple shout outs to some of the guys, uh, some of my subscribers and my friends. Um, thanks for all the friend requests, guys. Uh, Mister Mister Frost, Mister Nick Frosty, and um, a couple more other subscribers. Uh, the Kid Kenny, Dries Coder. And I thank you all guys for subscribing to my channel and um, leave feedback anytime you have questions or anything like that. And um, thank you all you other guys for subscribing. Um, all you guys are part of my community now and my first subscribers. And, you know, when I'm famous, then you guys can will be my friends and I'll help you guys. So, yeah, just want to give a little shout out right there to you guys. You know, thank you all. And now back to Java. So uh, j today, what we're going to be talking about is, well, actually... Uh, we're actually gonna be not talking about anything. We're actually gonna be building something today. Um, in our last tutorial, we actually talked about working with variables, and I went through step by step what a variable is and how you can actually implement it in your program. But um, today we're gonna be making a little bit uh, a more complex variable um, program that actually uses a variable, and we're gonna be building a calculator today or a basic. Um, adding calculator a basic calculator that basically adds numbers up when a user enters a number or the, the user will enter two numbers and then it will calculate each um each number and it will print the calculate out the calculator the, the total or the sum out to the user all right so um the first thing we do is let's go ahead and start a new uh project so let's go to file new and new java project and let's call this project, um, I'm going to call it uh, calculator. Let's call this calculator. And once you put calculator, go ahead and finish it. And all right, there we go. So we have our new project called the calculator. And what we want to do is, like we always do in my last tutorials, if you haven't noticed, um, and if you, it's your first time watching my tutorials, make sure you go back and um, start with the first tutorial and kind of, or maybe the second if you already installed Eclipse. And just go through and kind of make sure you're, you know, you're acclimated with everything we're doing and kind of up to date and caught up on things because I don't want you guys to be confused um, on this one tutorial. You know, I want to, you know, it's a series, so, you know, start at the beginning and go to the end. So, all right, let's go ahead and get a new class. So let's go to our source folder right here and right click or left click and right click now. And when you right click, you're going to go to new and new class. All right, so we have our class. So let's name our class calculator. Let's name it adding calculator. So we have our class name, and let's go ahead and check public static void and inherited ma abstract methods. Uncheck that and finish. All right, there we go. So now um, the first thing we always do is anytime we're asking the user for input. We're gonna need something to actually scan what the users put in and actually convert it or put it into our variables. So let's go ahead and do our, our famous scanner statement. So let's go ahead and import java dot util dot scanner semicolon. All right, so we just imported our scanner to use it in our program. And now what we do is we actually have to um, we got we have to instantiate what the scanner is. We got to actually call the scanner in our main method or in our, our static void, which is our main method right here. So we need to actually implement the scanner into our program. So what you want to do is you want to do scanner reader, and what what reader is reader is basically what I'm naming my scanner. So I'm gonna have my scanner, and my scanner's name is going to be reader because it's actually going to be reading what the user puts in, and it's going to be equals new scanner system in and we're telling the system that it's going to be important the information inside all 
All right, there we go. So what we just did, we said we said I want a scanner. Oops, we import it, and I want to name it reader. And I want the reader to actually equal a new scanner. And I want the scanner to import the information it scans into the system. Hey, that's pretty good, wasn't it? Hmm. All right, so um, there we go. So we have our scanner statement, and now we need to what um, we need to actually put our variables or make our variables um, a number or make our variables pretty much. So what we want to do is we're going to have our variables a double because we want the user to be able to put in decimals too, not just integers. So we want to do double, we're going to do double first num. Make sure the first num is actually a capital N. Make sure the first is lowercase and the num is capital num and semicolon. And we're going to make one more double and we're going to do double second or well, sec let's do sec num which stands for second number and there we go all right so what we did is we have our our two variables our first double which is uh, a decimal number that can be a number that can be a decimal have a decimal place and we called it the first num and then we made a second uh, variable and we called that double second num which is going to be our second number and we have our first number right here so the first thing we want to do is we need our, the user to actually in, to input a number so we can, you know, we, we can't add a number to use it as an input anything, right? Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do system dot out dot print. We don't want to do print line because we want our cursor to actually end at the line of code. If we put a print line, the, the cursor will actually move to the next line of code. We don't want that. We want it to be organized where the user can enter in the number right at the end of the line of the uh, end of the statement. Let's do print parentheses and we're going to do enter. Well, capital E. Enter your first number. Enter your first number. And let's go ahead and end that. Well, it's got quotation. Don't forget your quotations. And we're going to tell the user to enter your first number and put a semicolon there and put like a little space just to leave a space where the user could type it right there. And mash enter. And now what we need to do is when the user puts in their the number and they match enter, we want the reader to actually scan or import that number into the system and store it inside of the double first number variable. And to do that, we need to actually do reader. Well, we actually do need to do first num. First num, which is our double right here, our first variable. And we want this, this first num to equal whatever the reader or the scanner imp imports. So we want that that, num that variable to store any information that the scanner reader imports. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do reader dot next double. And what next double, and what we just did is we said we want the first number, the double, to equal whatever the reader imports as long as it's a next double. So when the user mass enters, the scanner is gonna scan it and say, hey, that's a double. And it's going to store that double, that variable inside of the first num, first num variable. See, get it, guys? So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of uh, makes sense once you kind of realize what each line of code do. Because the thing is, you don't want to just be able to write programs. You want to understand each and every line of code, and you want to understand what you're doing and how it works. Because if you don't, um, there's really no point in programming. Anyone can just sit here and watch my tutorials and just uh, you know copy off what I'm doing. But the point is. I want you guys to actually understand what we're implementing in our programming and what each line of code means so you guys can be excellent programs like myself here. Sorry, I had to give myself a little compliment. All right, anyway, on with the subject. So um, now what we need to do is we need to make room for our second number. So we need the system to actually do the same thing as it did for the first one, except we want to store the information into the second number. So let's go ahead and do system dot out dot print and we want to print the same thing we did up here so we're going to change first to second so we're going to do enter your well yeah enter your second number enter your second number all right so we just told the user to enter their second no well, I forgot the quotation again Pam there we go all right so we just told the user to enter your second number. And we want the second number to equal the reader on the next double. So we need to do the first thing we did for the first one, except change it to second num. So let's go ahead and do sec 
num equals reader dot next there it is next double and you can kind of match enter sometimes if the code the right uh code method you want or the code comes up you can just enter and it'll actually finish the statement for you so as long as you know what you're doing or you know what it is because you don't want to just match enter and then you're like oh my god what is that <laughs> so and that happens to me before so i learned from experience so there we go so we just told the second number to equal the whatever the scanner imports along as long as it's a next double and we want that next double that it imports to actually store that value inside of the second number or the variable all right so there we go so now what we need to do is we actually need to, need to make a a second variable or actually a third variable we need to make a third variable because we actually need the answer to be stored inside of a variable because um, well, I mean, we could make the use the output just print the output, but we actually want to make a variable because that's the whole point of this lesson is to make the make variables, right? So what we want to do is we want to do uh, double sum, and what double sum is? Double is now um, our we have a, a double that's that is called sum. So now what we want to do is we want to do um, sum we need to make the sum to equal whatever the first number is plus the second number so we want to do is we want to do uh, parentheses and we want to do first num plus sec num and now what we just did is we just put a, a formula or arithmetic operator or arithmetic well the arithmetic operator is any um like the the plus sign the asterisk sign which stands for multiplication and then the slash which stands for division and the percent sign which is a modulus which returns a remainder so what we want to do is we just made our sum that's the double to equal whatever the first number is plus the second number so now we need to actually print the sum out to the user and we need to, because we want this user to see the answer, correct? So what we want to do is we want to do system dot out dot print line. And this time we want to do print line because we don't want the user to import, input anything. So we don't really care if their cursor goes to the next line. So we can do print line on this one. And we're just going to put sum and semicolon. So whenever you're putting a, when you're trying to display a variable to the user, all you have to do is just put the name of the variable inside of the parentheses and it will actually print the variable. Whatever the value that variable is, it will print it out to the user. All right. So there we go, guys. So let's go ahead and run it. Let's run this and let's, let's go ahead and run it and see the out output. So, um, so here we go. So as we see here, it says, Enter your first number and see the cursors at the end of that line. So what we want to do is we actually want to put, let's do eight. Since this is our eighth tutorial, let's do eight. And now it says enter your second number. And let's enter eight again. So now we're going to match enter and it should, and it's going to add up each, what's eight plus eight, and it's going to display it out to us. And there it is. So we see we have enter your first number, which is eight. And then enter your second number was eight. And eight plus eight equals 16. And we could sum this up a little. We could have put like um, the answer is right here. Put that in there. And then we could have put a plus sign right here. And we could have put the answer is plus sum. And basically we're putting, we're just going to say, well, I'll get, we'll just see. So let's do Earth run it again. And this time, make sure you make that change to your program too. Just add the answer is in quotations and then do plus sum. And make sure you put a space between the is and the quotation. So let's go ahead and enter our first number. Let's do 8.5. Enter. And now it says enter your second number. So let's do 8.5. Now it's my enter. And there we go. So as you see here, we say enter your first number, which is 8.5. Enter your second number, 8.5. And we see the answer is 17.0. And it did, and you see there when we did double, it actually recognized the decimals and added the decimals up. And eight and a half plus eight and a half is 17. All right. So, congratulations, guys. You just built a calculator, a basic calculator. So, give yourself a hand clap. Give yourself a hand clap. Pretty good. Pretty awesome. We're pretty awesome. We're pretty awesome. So, there we go. So, we just learned more about variables and implementing them into our programming, our program. And we just learned how to build a basic calculator. 
So I hope you all guys enjoyed this and this is our eighth tutorial. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time.